last we see of our rubbish is when we tie up the bin bag and leave it out on the road for the bin man to collect. In the second in this series of films plunging below the waistline, we follow the hidden journey refuse takes, see where it ends up and meet the people who take it there. This is Jim Upjohn, bin man for Veolia Environmental Services, the private contractor who operate Westminster's refuse collection. He is part of a team that collects 200,000 tonnes of waste from the streets of Westminster each year. I've been a dustman since 1971, which will be 40 years in, in, uh, in August. I'm normally up at 3.30 in the morning to be at work for five. I literally work seven days a week. This year, I even work Christmas Day. I work Christmas Day, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, I worked it all. It's not fun like when you've got family. You know, you haven't seen them all day, and sometimes you don't see them from days on end where you're so tired. While Jim and his crew work long, unsociable hours, they don't always feel appreciated. I've got the hazard warning lights on, I've got my feet that's going like the clappers. People are impatient, they don't want to get past. But... Sometimes it's frustrating. You're just trying to do your job. Well, that's right. And sometimes you get no thanks for it, neither. Despite the stresses and strains of Jim's day out on the streets of Westminster, there are some perks. About seven years ago, one of our crews found a bag, a satchel full of uh, Dutch money with passports and everything, travellers checks. And what he'd done was he took the um, telephone out of the woman's bag, right? He went and said, oh, you, you've left this bag. And, it, and all they got in as a reward was £25. How much money do you think might have been in there? Well, if you put it this way, I wouldn't have handed it in myself. Sometimes M&S leave food on the top where out of date food. Um, could be yoghurt, cheese, meat, any, any, any kind of food. Flowers. And sometimes is it good? If, if it's not too out of date, we take it home. It's one of the little perks we get. The coalition government's cuts mean that some councils are switching from weekly refuse collections to fortnightly collections. But residents are not the only ones affected. Less pickups mean less work for Britain's bin men. They've taken a, a couple of vehicles off. Uh, we've got some guys now who, with the cuts, have had to uh, retire, them, retire them. Back in the old days, we was on strike for six weeks where the winter of discontent. Now, there was so much rubbish on the streets, the government lost their, lost their, lost their power, and it took months to clear up. Now, the fire brigade were coming down, hosing every other day because of the stench. And to tell the truth, I hope it don't ever get like that again. While there have been some grim forecasts about coalition cuts sparking another winter of discontent, Jim insists that times have changed since 1978. The unions are basically non-existent now. They haven't got the power like the old days. In the old days, to become a dustman, it was always like father, son, grandson, family, friends. It was the only way you could ever get on this job. When we were a private company, all they would do is just go to the agency and order 100 men. In today's society, it's good to have a job the way things are going. You know, people are getting laid off left, right and centre. Um, I don't think I could handle being on the dole. Wide-scale industrial action may be unlikely in today's Britain, but below the waistline, we found that the fear created by impending public sector cuts are having a less overt but significant effect on the way our refuse is disposed of. Um, we, we've had a report to pick up a contaminated glass bin. Two. What's the matter with these bins, Jim? What's wrong with these, Jim? Nothing. 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 Why Nothing. Why did they report them contaminated? It's the recycling crew. Right. Mind your ear on. It's 
So shouldn't these, shouldn't these things, these bottles be being recycled? Why aren't they being recycled? No, to me, that was a waste. That, that was neglect in my part. I'm going to report it to my manager. There wasn't nothing wrong with it. And also, we got it on camera as well. All it wants is a manager or foreman to come and say, yeah, that's contaminated, that's fair enough. But no one's bothering to check it. We get loads of it, and there's nothing wrong with it. Still, I don't mind because it keeps the lorry on the road. The more tonnage we pick up, we know that the lorry's safe, it ain't going to come off. That's the way I look at things. If, if they're going to start taking lorries off, as I said to my crew, if in doubt, throw it on, because it saves them, saves them taking a the lorry off the road, which is good. So at least the boys are still in the job. And I think that's the best way of looking at it myself. In today's society, where they're getting rid of people, what, you know, you, you're trying to save the boys their jobs. We left Leicester Square to take our dust cart of refuse containing recyclable material to Veolia's incineration plant in Deptford, South London. Here, giant metal claws prepare 420,000 tonnes of waste for the burner. The power produced from this process is sold back to the grid, supplying enough energy for 48,000 homes. But we couldn't help wondering how much of this waste could have been recycled. We contacted Veolia, who told us that in Westminster there is on average three or four instances of contamination a day, but that they don't report containers as being contaminated unless they are. To meet coalition cuts, local councils around the UK are set to freeze pay for 1.4 million employees. Westminster alone is looking to save £7 million by cutting rubbish collections. With private refuse collectors such as Veolia facing slimmer margins and bin men anxious to keep their weights up for fear of redundancy, how much more of our recycling may end up in the flames of the incinerator? Do we care what happens below Britain's bulging waistline or do we just want rubbish off our hands and minds? I don't think people are bothered really. Um, basically, all they're interested in is getting their rubbish picked up. And if they don't get, if they don't get it picked up, it's going to go back to the old days where there's going to be flights of it. Come on, 